Okay, oligopoly. Uh, I know it's a weird word, but oligopoly is going to be where instead of a one company dominating the market, you have several companies dominating the market. Uh, there's no definite number. Some people will say, you know, like three to six. I don't think I'd go much higher than six. Uh, but here, uh, you want to find a few large companies, right? And here, um, uh, because there's only a few of them, they do have more control over output than we have more competitive markets and more control over the price since there's fewer of them. However, they're still in competition and there's only so much they can do. Uh, uh, there's not a huge variety in the products because, again, there's uh, only a few companies that are producing, so they don't have to. All right. And the barriers to entry are really high. Uh, my favorite example of an oligopoly is... There we go. Uh, cell phone providers. Uh, so uh, we've got four big guys, right? AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. And actually two of those. Yeah, who was it? Some one of these guys bought the other one. Was it Sprint and T-Mobile that merged? I want to say. I think that's right. All right. So uh, we're about to go down to three. All right. If you look at these four players, they control something like 90% of all cell phone service in the United States. All right. So if you think about cell phone service providers, uh, these four companies, well, I mean, let's be honest. Are the plans really all that different? Nah. Are the prices really all that much different? Eh, nah. Is the product they provide really all that much different? Eh, nah. Right? Now, uh, maybe in some areas, you know, one of the companies has better coverage than others, and they all brag about their speeds, but they're all offering very similar product, very similar plans, uh, etc. Right? Now, uh, what you used to have a long time ago is a whole bunch of cell phone companies. When cell phone uh, f cell phones uh, first became a thing, you'd wind up having all these little companies, all these uh, little places and towns, right? And then they started merging together and becoming bigger. Then you have the big players, big telcos, telecommunication companies coming along and buying them until eventually they all got cobbled together into these four guys, right? And so uh, now we're about to have three of them. All right, so what used to be a, uh, what we'll later call monopolistically competitive environment, now it's an oligopoly where mergers took place at the point that you only have these. Now, uh, let's say you wanted to open up your own cell phone service uh, providing company. Well, I'm talking about from scratch. Man, it's going to cost you billions of dollars just to be able to buy the radio spectrum at market. And then you have to spend billions of dollars more building out the network and having satellites and radio towers and everything else. All right. So the barriers to entry to starting a new company in this market are significant, which means nobody's going to do it. All right. You're not going to have a new player coming in and opening up their own company in this market. You're going to be left with these four, about to be three companies. All right. Another example, soda companies. So you have Coca-Cola dominating, what, 41%, Dr. Pepper, Snapple Group, 15.4%, PepsiCo is 33.6% uh, of the market, so uh, they dominate sodas. Or if you look at these companies, all of these different brand names that you thought were completely independent, no, uh, they're owned by a small group of corporations. So you have, uh, let's see, Kraft, Coca-Cola... Uh, PepsiCo, General Mills, Kellogg's, Mars, Unilever, Johnson Johnson, Procter & Gamble, and Nestle. So if you look at Nestle, they produce everything from Nescafe and Nestle. You yeah, know, that makes sense. But they also own Dryers and Gerbers. And, oh, look over here. They also are uh, making uh, L'Oreal. Yep. So they wind up owning all this stuff. Procter & Gamble, you see how their tentacles are everywhere, and all these guys, right? Or uh, I like this one over here. If you ever wondered why if you go into a Taco Bell, they never wind up having Coca-Cola products. It's always PepsiCo. Well, there's a reason for that. Taco Bell and these restaurants are owned by the Yum Corporation, which are owned by PepsiCo. So only Pepsi products there. Or TV stations are a similar type of deal. So all these different TV stations are owned by a small group of companies. You know uh, General Electric, Time Warner, News Corp, CBS, Walt Disney Company, and Viacom. And they like to do synergy. Uh, and Time Warner, man, they got recently bought by AT&T. So AT&T is about to dominate everything. Where they have uh, the production content, they make the content, and they also broadcast it. Or how about this? We got uh, personal care companies, right? So these guys own all those different brands or car companies.
Yeah, how about that one? All right. So Toyota is Lexus, Scion, which that's going around. Yeah, they get around. I don't remember. And Daihatsu or GM is Buick, Cadillac, uh, Chevy, GMC, Holden. I don't even know what that is and whatever these guys are. All right. So these aren't independent car brands. They're owned by, again, a relatively small group of corporations. Okay, so that was it for Olagoplay, right? Few small companies dominating the market. Well, not small companies. They're usually big companies. But a few companies, anyway, dominating that market.